Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are here at the nursery. We are going to get the raised garden, elevated garden, berm, whatever you want to call it here uh, at the Proven Winter Signature Garden Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina, Zone 8A. It is a uh, very full, crazy day today. It is almost lunchtime and I am just now getting started officially getting ready to plant. I have got a gorgeous selection of uh, plants here that I'm going to put into the garden. I am flying solo today because everybody else is being pulled in a million different directions. The nursery is open. You will see customers going around. Uh, so it is a quite full. Jerry and Cece are running the garden center. And then my rest of my people, let's see, my girls are up at shipping, working their little hearts out on shipping. Jackson and Andrew are landscaping. It is just, like I said, a very, very full day here. Praise the Lord, it is cloudy. So hopefully we will not die of sweat as we are putting these plants in. I have been waiting for this day for a long time and I am very excited about it because this is gonna be such a fun space. So let's talk about the space and let's talk about the annuals that are going to go in it. Of course we are here at the entrance, right? Uh, the official entrance in the sign, I believe you can see, it's just right down there. You were with Jerry and I when we put in the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry that will come on down. No, we have not fixed the rock right here. Uh, yeah, we'll get that done. <laughs> We'll get it done, people. Um, and so we're gonna be focusing completely on these two raised gardens. They are planted the exact same. They are the exact same size. On the left, we have sprinter boxwoods that when they reach maturity, they will form a nice hedge and we will keep them as a hedge, sun or shade, evergreen shrub that we just love. Then to the right, we have little lime punch, perhaps, perhaps my favorite hydrangea. This thing is gorgeous, beautiful flowers, loves the sun. When it is in maturity, full size, because it'll get three to five feet tall and wide, they too will be kissing each other. And then the sprinters and the hydrangeas will be kissing one another. Now, in the meantime, you will notice that I have a pretty big open space between the two shrubs. This is the very first year, right? This garden is, I don't know, six months old, eight months old at the absolute most. And so when you're waiting for your shrubs, your perennials to grow and fill in and mature, then we go ahead and use our annuals as, um, as fillers. That is what we're going to use this, do this year rather, and we are going to use the Angel Face Wedge Wood Blue um, Angelona. So this is a really great sun loving, heat tolerant, loves life in the sun, does really well in our heat and humidity. Um, it is going to be more upright. It has a beautiful bicolor of white and like bluish purple flowers. I have my very first one that is cracking some color right there. So they are very getting nice and budded out, but not really full of, of color right now. The height on these is 18 to 30 inches and my spacing is 10 inches. I am going to go ahead and use that 10 inches. I think I have 80 here. Um, and so each of these beds is 33 feet long. So if I space them out a foot, then that's 33 plants per bed. Total is 66. We're gonna put them a little bit closer. 80 is going to be about what I want. So that is going to give me nice color upright, but allows the sun to get all around the boxwoods and all around the hydrangeas because I don't want anything too ginormous that really fills in and starts to crowd out the hydrangeas and the um, boxwoods because I need my shrubs to grow. So I don't want my annual to get too wide. Does that make sense? So if you're trying to encourage your shrubs to grow, go something with a little bit more narrow so that the sun can get all around those plants and they can get nice and big. I can trim back these angelona if they start to get a little too wide. It'll actually help the plant make it bushier and encourage more flowers. So that is what we are going to do there. Now, I have quite the collection of plants. <laughs> quite the collection uh, because I am going to use 
all of these different types of plants, a beautiful assortment of plants um, here in the front of the beds. I want to have a really full, um, fun display of annuals all the way down the front. So when you're walking by, you can get really up close and personal with those annuals, see them, touch them, smell them, all the things. I have got different heights in here. I have got different colors. I have got different textures. I even have some plants that have a delicious fragrance. Well, I find it, <laughs> I find it fun. Some people may not, but let's just go through. We're going to talk about, in a way, I'm going to plant this as a container with that recipe of that thriller filler spiller but I'm going to do it in the landscape. So we're going to start with our thrillers first, right? These are your taller plants um, that have the more interest. So I really have two here. I have, of course, the surefire rose begonia. I love surefire rose begonias because they are just absolutely foolproof. They can do sun. They can do shade. They can do um, just anything in between with those sun conditions once they are established they are very drought tolerant so the sure fires are going to be 12 to 24 inches tall now when you're looking at that that 12 inches is going to be like more in a container your 24 inches is going to be more in the landscape so i suspect that these are going to get nice and full on the back my minimum spacing is 12 inches my max is 18. So I'm only going to need one per group because the idea here is that I am going to come up with a pattern of using these plants and then I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way down. So that's the idea. So we've got the surefire rose, then we've got to have some coleus. We've got the color blaze golden dreams coleus. Again, sun or shade, extremely versatile. Now this is 24 to 40 inches tall. Great thing though, is that with your coleus, the more you pinch it and kind of keep it controlled, the thicker and fuller it gets. So it's not gonna be a problem if I need to, to come in here and keep it so it doesn't get too tall. Um, but I love the Golden Dreams because it just has, it has some yellow, it's got that burgundy, which will kind of, you know, just really kind of pop in this garden. So those two are going to be my thrillers. Now, my fillers are the more mounded things. So we've got the Artist Blue Ageratum, really nice, sweet plant. Artist Blue, we grew last year in the gardens for the first time, and it did amazingly well. Now, on your Artist Blue, your spacing, your minimum spacing is 10 inches, so I might double these up. Like, I might take two and plant them as one. I haven't fully decided yet. And then we have the new, this year for Proven Winners, the Selenia Yellow Begonia sun to shade 8 to 12 so this is going to be more of a mounded habit but those flowers are just gorgeous i love them sweet soft buttery yellow looks really nice with the ageratum it's uh, just fantastic now these are eight inches um, on your minimum spacing this is <laughs> all that I have available because I have used them in hanging baskets and I want to use them in the deck boxes on the back of the house, right? So I have not even quite four trays. So I'm gonna be a little bit more sparing with these guys. So we're gonna work with what we got, people. So we've got that, let's see, uh, mounded. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's see over here. All right, I got some more moundy things. <laughs> That's a real technical term, moundy things. Cerveza and lime. Cerveza and lime is a plectranthus that this is the one that has the delicious, I think, smell because it smells just like lime. So when you come and you rub the leaves, it has a really kind of a waxy texture to it. Oh, it smells like lime. I personally really like it. 14 to 18 inches tall, and then my spacing is eight. So again, I might double these up because they have a nice mounted habit, but I wanna make sure that they have a nice presence, so I may double those up. Next, the Plum Dandy. Plum Dandy is foliage only. There will be no flowers on this guy, 10 to 16 inches tall, and this is gonna be 12 inches apart. So I should be able to be just fine and do one of those nice mounded habit, dark color, and we'll just kind of have a really fun kind of a moody habit to it. 
and it will bring that nice dark burgundy color and be really fun with the other one. Now this might be actually, it's kind of a thriller and a filler at the same time. This is Mystic Illusion and this is a Dahlia, 18 to 36 inches tall. So yeah, it's gonna probably be more of a little bit of a thriller there. Um, but I like the dark color of, the, of course, the leaf. Now you may be looking at some of them and they may seem a little bit more green. That is simply because of the UV light. When they got the UV light, they turn black and then they do this beautiful, really sweet yellow flower on it. My spacing on those is 12 inches. So I've got three trays of those because that should be plenty for me. Okay, so, okay, another, let's go for another filler. We gotta have a little white, right? Gotta have a little pop of white. The white against that plum dandy and the mystic illusion, that dark, right, would look absolutely just fantastic against each other. Of course, this is a diamond snow. See how nice and tight this is, right? So diamond snow is going to be 12 to 18 inches tall but it has really tight, compact white flowers on it. Whereas Diamond Frost is light and airy. It's roughly the same size as far as your height, but your Diamond Snow gives you a really concentrated um, pop of white. So that's why I want to use it in here as opposed to Frost, which is more light and airy. Then I have three spillers. I'm going to come right here because that's where I am. First one, Mini Vista Indigo. Mini Vista Indigo is going to repeat the blue from here with my Artist Blue Adjuratum. Now this is a Mini Vista. So I went ahead and brought down, I have eight trays of this because I'll probably go ahead and double them up so that I really get a big punch of that indigo color in the garden. It is going to trail, it is going to mound, but it will not be as quite as far as a trailer goes as my saffron finch that I have right there. Of course, saffron finch, the new petunia this year, um, one of my absolute favorites. Um, it is a gorgeous, true yellow, um, just a really, really fun color, really pretty. Um, and it is just what we call like a, a regular super tunia. It's not a vista, it's not a mini vista, it's just a standard super tunia. So it is still going to trail. It is going to get nice and full. Um, I don't know, I may double these up as well because this is a display garden, right? This is not uh, just quote for my personal pleasure. This is a display garden so that when you come visit the nursery, um, like these sweet folks are back here, they can come and see and really um, enjoy this space. So. Uh, definitely going to be planting full in the signature garden. Last but certainly not least, with the spiller, I had to think for a second, with the spiller is also the new plant this year. This is the Superbina Pink Cashmere. I think if you, if you are a fan, a follower of Proven Winners, you are familiar with this plant. Um, and so this is a very vigorous plant, as you can tell, right, from being in the greenhouse. Like, look at, like, look at the vigor already. So this is a really nice soft pink. It's not a hot pink. It does kind of have an ombre look to it. When it first starts, you can see it is a really rich pink, but then as it matures, it will go to like a white. So on the same flower, you have lots of different shades of pink and white huge, huge flower heads. Um, this is extremely vigorous. I do have four trays because my fault is that I will use one pink cashmere in my mixture, right? So in my plan, I will use one, but then what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop in those colors, um, those nice big concentrations, because on my corners, I have, um, I have a nice corner on all four corners right here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do a concentration of the pink cashmere on each of the corners. See how much room I have right here? So we'll have the Wedgwood Blue that comes down, but then I've got this nice pocket right here. So like I could put three. Three would be plenty. So I can do three on each of the corners and then it really kind of all ties in the garden together. Um, so this is going to be a long project, I have a feeling, because uh, yeah, 
flying solo today, which is fun, right? It's, it's, I'm in the garden and it's a gorgeous day and I get to work with amazing plants. What could be better? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the camera set up. Oh, let's talk about tools. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plant the angelonas. Let me tell you what my tools are, right? Of course, uh, I've got my pop-up bag because <laughs> before I could even get started, I had to weed, you know, weeding. Oh my word, a gardener's chore of weeding is never done. So I pulled the weeds. I'm going to dig my holes with my power planter auger. This is, of course, the Jenny's edition. Even though this is a lot of, there is a lot of fill dirt, there are still some rocks in here from when we filled in. That's where the heavy duty tip comes into play. Really will make great work. It is the, this is like a five inch auger, so it's the perfect width for a grande container. If you're interested, it is, uh, the pink is currently available on the website. The color of the pink is limited edition. So if you don't like pink, there's also lime green and you can go for that. So this is nice. Um, it's taller than the standard. It has less flighting right here, so it's not as heavy. And then of course that heavy duty tip. Um, clearly I use this thing all the time. So I'm gonna drill my holes with that. And then I have my biotone. So what I'll probably do before, the very first thing I'm gonna do is get my biotone and I'm going to go ahead and spread it on all of the flower beds. So where I'm gonna plant today, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it down, get the stink over for the first time, and then we'll move on. So what I'm gonna do, lay out the biotone. Then I'm not even gonna lay out the Wedgwood Blue because it's the exact same plant and I'm gonna be spacing them the exact same distance apart. So I'm just gonna go ahead, drill all my holes, and then I'll come back and plop them in the ground. Then I get to figure out what my design, my pattern is going to be with all of these stunning annuals. So let's get going. All right, my friends, so whoo we uh, we got all of we, <laughs> me, with the encouragement of all the sweet people who were here, got the Angelonia planted, so Wedgwood Blue down the center. Are my lines perfectly straight? No. Now, the, the f far left bed was pretty straight. I'm not sure really what happened over here on the right. You know what? There is grace in gardening. These plants will fill out. You'll never know. So right now, it's 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 a little off but that's okay um only if you're looking straight down do you see that got my plants laid out and i think i have solidified my um design i consulted both jerry and cc and they gave me the thumbs up so let's just kind of walk through this um you sh yes you can see all this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to keep the pink cashmere on the corners I'm not going to integrate it into the design because I just have so I have so many different plants that I want to use and so I'm just going to use the pink cashmere on the corners. So I have five of them right here because 
you know, the hydrangeas are not very big yet. And so this is really going to fill in and be like cashmere corner and will kind of spill over onto the wall. So on all four of the corners will be a, probably about that five of the pink cashmere. Now, what I did is essentially, so from hydrangea to hydrangea is my design, my pattern that I'm going to repeat all the way down. Remember, this is a display garden. We have a wedding signature experience. I've got tons of people coming in here up close and personal on this. This is a display garden. Um, so I was talking to Jerry and he was like, honey, go big or go home. And he said, you have the plants, get them in there. And I was like, yes, sir, I will do that. <laughs> so every plant is doubled up and the mini Vista Indigo has three of them put together. Remember I said, I want to be able not to be able to see any soil at all from the hydrangeas down. So that's what we're doing. I told Cece by, you know, mid July, I may be cursing my current self because of how many plants I put in here, but we're going to do it. This is my very first time planting this garden, right? First time, just like you at home, the first time you're planting in a certain container, in a certain location, in a certain flower bed, you don't have any reference point. I have zero reference point for this garden and how it's going to grow and how fast it's going to grow. I just know the plants and so I'm just going to base it off of that. I'm going big people. All right, so this is the design. Um, we'll do this one since it's a little closer. Okay, between the two hydrangeas, we have in centered is the color blaze golden dreams, right? Because that's going to be my tallest. So golden dreams, then on each side. So I have the surefire rose on one side, then I have the mystic illusion dahlia on the other side. With that, we have um, the diamond snow in the middle with the plum dandy and their cerveza and lime on each side of that. The diamond snow is definitely gonna be more mounded, right? The plum dandy and the cerveza and lime, yes, they're mounded, but they'll have more um, upright vertical like sprigs coming out. So they're not gonna be like a, it's not gonna be like everybody's mounded right here. So we have that, it's kind of in the middle row. And then down the next, we have two of the saffron finches next to two of the artist blue adjuratums next to three of the mini vista indigo behind mini vista indigo is the two um, selenia yellows that's the design and so it just repeats so actually you know coming down here like you'll see because this is the end this is the end this is the beginning so we have saffron finch and mini vista indigo that will come together um, so again, that's the idea. Everybody is going to get nice and happy and all together and they're going to intermingle and they will be, uh, as Mary Claire says, they're dating, not, no, they're married, not dating because they're going to be all up in each other's business right there. Um, so we're going to repeat that all the way down because I am working solo. I think what I'm going to do is then I'm just going to go ahead and lay everybody out. Lay out both of the beds all the way out, and then I will come back and I will drill the holes. I may drill, drill the holes a section at a time. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a great day. It's a lot of work. All right, so let's get going.
my friends, stick a fork in me because I am done. <laughs> it's 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh my gosh, uh, Andrew and Jerry came in about the last, I don't know, 45 minutes or so and just kind of drug me over the finish line. They didn't even like help me cross the finish line. They had to like drag me. This was a massive project for one person to do. Um, I'm just grateful that the sun was not predominantly out today. It was a cooler day. I probably have sweat and dirt all over me. I am a gardening hot mess, but the garden looks great. Um, and of course, it's only going to get better, right? Everybody is in. Uh, nice little drink of water. So if that's why things look a little smushed, it's because they just got uh, hit with some water. But everybody got planted as one plant right so you can kind of see because of the water that like this diamond snow right here has split open it's just because of the water by tomorrow morning everybody's gonna be perky and happy and full but already it looks great it has lots of color in it it is going to be gorgeous it is going to grow and be full now i could and i may do it it just depends on how the plants respond but some of uh, the pink cashmere for here and then like the mini vista indigo they had gotten what we call long and leggy because they are so aggressive and they were in the trays and close to one another we don't use growth regulators so they started growing pretty long so they had these long um, stems on them you can easily come in here and pinch them back It'll help tighten up the plant, lots of thick growth, and will actually make a happier plant long term. More than likely, I will go ahead and do that. <laughs> Not today, um, but I can do that. Predominantly, what I would do it with would be the verbena and then the two petunias. Just a nice little snip. I'm not gonna like go crazy on them. So maybe like here, I would take it back to right here. Take all this extra off, take it back here. Yes, I know that there's a bud right there, but in the long term, this will help the plant be a happier plant. So that's a little bit of maintenance that I can do right now to make them happy and um, bushier and really um, handle this heat because tomorrow it is supposed to be close to 90 degrees. It's insane. It's way too early for this. It's the middle of April. Um, but then we cool back down again. So if you remember when we were in behind the garden shed just the other day and we planted the rock and deep purple and the mini vista hot pink, um, the, and like the snow drift, right? So I was back there yesterday watering again, but remember how I told you it was a super hot spot. And um, even though the plants had been well watered by mid afternoon, the, especially the salvia and the mini vista hot pink and the sunflowers were starting to wilt. So I went ahead and trimmed them. I went ahead and cut them back. That again, it encourages branching. It encourages um, a stronger, stockier, compact plant, also more flowers. But what it also does is it helps the plant because the plant is not trying to keep um, so much plant alive and happy and getting water and nutrition to all of those, the flowers and everything. So by making it a smaller plant, there's less stress on the plant. And we want to have happy plants not stressed out plants so i went ahead and trimmed them back obviously and watered as well but yeah it was a humdinger of a project but i am so excited with how um, it looks how it's going to look in um, the next couple of weeks in the next month in the next three months everything it is going to be really fun loads and loads of color the next step, um, we will go back and mulch this. So we're gonna use our special blend, the Creekside blend of compost and pine bark vines. That entire bed will get mulched. So just know that um, I did not put any slow release fertilizer in there, the time release, <laughs> we don't have any. So I'm waiting on that. I can easily go back and add that. That will help me in the long run um, with that as well. What is next on the list for sure is going to be the fountain. And in fact, Jerry had the fountain up and running and then we're still dealing with that middle bowl. He had gotten it sealed and then something happened and then it stopped. It's a whole thing, y'all. Anyway, it was running and so you can see it's full of water, but you can see also where he was stepping, right? Because I mean, the violas are done, obviously the tulips are done. So go ahead and rip these out. I am not planting this with the Hoopla Vivid Orchid until that fountain is completely 
working the way that it is supposed to. Um, what I can do is we are, have back here in the back the glitters and glows viburnums. You can see we've got two hedges right here. We're going to put diamond frost between each one, either three or four. I, can, I don't know. We'll just have to look and see how that uh, works out in my numbers, but that's going to happen there. And then we will move on the pansies and the violas. Des they just look awful. I'm just going to be honest. They just look terrible. It's embarrassing, but you know what? It is what it is. So they need to come out and then we can get these planted as well with all the annuals. So um, this is very much a time of year where I can easily feel overwhelmed and discouraged and very stressed and very anxious because there feels like there is so much work to be done. There is a lot of work to be done, but um, I have found <laughs> through the years that the best way to deal with that is to focus on one area and get it done and then move to the next area. I can be a very task oriented person sometimes. So I feel really good about this. We will, depends. I doubt we'll be able to mulch that this week because the nursery's open. So we'll probably have to wait till like Monday or Tuesday when we don't have customers here so that we can get that mulch. And then I can like kind of check that one off the brain and we can move to other areas. So one piece at a time, there's grace in gardening. It's looking great. Is it perfect? By no means no. Is life perfect? By no means no. Progress, not perfection. So as always, we so appreciate you. Thank you for going to the Creekside. Y'all have an amazing day. I got to go take Jackson to church now. So make up supper. You know, life of a working mama or any mama, any parent never ends. So chop, chop. Here we go. See you on the next video. Bye, friends.